As I waited, so it happened. One moment he was on the track, the next his driver and fireman jumped clear as he rolled over. No one was hurt. His coach stayed on the rails and the guard braked her to a stop. They brought Godred home next day. We've no money to mend you, said our manager, so you'll go to the back of the shed. As time went on, poor Godred got smaller and smaller till nothing was left. What, what, what happened? asked Duncan anxiously. It's not nice to talk about, said Caldy. The Caldy Fell engines were always some of my favorites as a kid, which in retrospect is kind of strange seeing as they never made it to the TV series. However, as a kid, I had a RWS collection book, and in that book was not only these engines' illustrations, but also their stories. One of these stories, which I have vivid memories of, is Bad Lookout. And to grossly oversimplify the story, here's kind of how it goes. One day, Duncan ends up in a bad mood, this being because the thing controller says that he keeps a bad lookout. So, Scarlow and Reneas change the subject of the conversation by asking Coldy about his coaches. However, the conversation soon shifts to Coldy's automatic brakes, and the story of Godred an engine who happened to have too much faith in his automatic brakes. Despite frequent discipline, Godred would continue in his ways. Eventually, Godred would not only fall off of the track, but down the mountainside. Since the manager had no money to repair Godred, he was put in the back of the shed, where, over time, the drivers would cannibalize him, using him for spare parts to mend Coldy and the other engines. Sir Handel and Duncan are understandably mortified, while Scarlowe and Reneas do not mention that the tale was made up. Yeah, it turns out Coldy was bullshit. However, what's unfortunately not made up is the inspiration for the story. Sure, the Coldy Fell engines are weird, and the fact that they have faces on the back of them is something that definitely interested me, but even more so the stories around these engines always felt so real. This can partly be attributed to the fact that these engines are based off of real ones, but even more so in their storytelling. Hopefully after hearing all of this, you'll be able to see it a little bit too. With all that being said, let's get into the true story of Bad Lookout. The accident would happen on the Snowden Mountain Railway, the actual real-life inspiration for the Coldy Fell, in 1896 on April 6th, its opening day. The engine this would happen to was number one, known as Lattice or Latus. Apologies, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Following another engine up the summit with a few coaches, and while all went well on the up trip, on the down trip things would take a turn for the worst. Due to the thawing of some frost, there was a clear subsidence in the track bed. This would cause the engine to mount the rails, and as she did so, her pinion would also lift clear, causing it to lose all of its brakes. The engine, however, would continue and gather speed going down the hill. The driver and fireman would jump clear and the two coaches would end up being halted by their automatic brakes. However, the engine would plummet about 2,000 feet landing in a valley far below. As you can see here, completely wrecked. Following this, the guard would apply his brakes and shout for everyone to remain where they are, but two people would jump from the train. One of them, whose name was Ellis Roberts, would end up hitting his head on a rock and dying in the hospital. As the locomotive would fall, it would end up damaging a telegraph pole. This would knock off all communication between the last station before the summit and the summit itself. Another driver, having waited three quarters of an hour for a clear signal, would start a slow and cautious descent. However, due to a mist, he wasn't able to see very far in front of him, and unfortunately wasn't able to hear anybody's screams to stop. Thankfully, going at a low speed, the locomotive would hit the two coaches from the previous train and send them rolling into a town, unfortunately still with passengers inside. Upon reaching the town, the coaches themselves would be derailed in a loop by a signalman. Hospital staff arrived almost immediately on scene and Ellis Roberts was carried down the mountain on a stretcher. The engine crews and staff would walk back down, leaving the locomotives and three coaches on the mountain. Lattis was never replaced and her number was never used for any other engine. Services would be suspended for another year until the track was repaired and the railway would reopen on April 16th in 1897. And thankfully since this, the railway has operated without major incident. Due to Lattice being in the shape that she was in, not a whole lot could be done for her, so instead they decided to use any parts that they could for spares for other locomotives. Unfortunately, that would be all that would become of the locomotive itself. I always felt that it was a shame that the Coldy Fell Railway never made it outside of the RWS series. The overall and unique design of the engines make them memorable, and you'd think since they're memorable that they'd be marketable too, but Mattel's not really known for hitting it on the nail. The fact that these engines only exist in the books is sad, but in a way I guess I'm just happy that we actually have them. When the miniature engines came back around, I thought there was a chance that we would see the CGI rendition of Coldy Fell at some point, but at the rate we're going now, I, I really doubt it's gonna happen. So yeah, it sucks, the only thing that we ever got from these engines was these story books, but at least these stories have a genuine and substance, as most RWS stories do. You can be impressed by the engines, or you could just fall into the stories, which all around in the Coldy Fell Railway are quite unique. If you're a Thomas fan and you haven't read the Mountain Engine stories, I highly recommend that you do. If you haven't, you're missing out on some really good storytelling and some really unique characters. And while this may be all we ever get for the Coldy Fell Railway, honestly, I think it's enough. 